Many of you may have heard of Delta-8 THC and Delta-9 THC and wondered what the differences were. Well, here on this Tobacco University video, we're going to go over and compare just what Delta-8 THC is compared to what Delta-9 THC is. Hopefully you find this information useful. All right, let's get into Delta-8 THC compared to Delta-9 THC. Well, first off, Delta-8 THC can be classified currently uh, as hemp, where Delta-9 THC is what can classify a cannabis plant as marijuana. So first off, let's explain the Delta-9 THC, something uh, you might have heard a little bit more, might be more familiar with. It is an activator of the CB1 receptor, the Delta-9. It's commonly known as THC and is the main intoxicating component to cannabis. THC intoxication has been shown to increase blood flow in the peripheral frontal uh, cortex region of the brain, which is responsible for decision making, attention, motor skills, and other executive functions. When THC binds to CBD1 receptors in the brain's reward system, it can tr trigger the feelings of euphoria. Much of THC's ability to relieve pain is due to its interaction with the CB1 receptors in the midbrain. Now we're going to talk about Delta-8 uh, THC, but here's just a little comparison of uh, the structures. We can see at first glance uh, pretty similar, look almost identical, but the key part here is the double bond here, or the double bond here. That's the difference between your uh, Delta-9 and your Delta-8. It has to do where that double bond is located. However, there's also great benefits and that's a switch of a double bond. There's also some differences in uh, the, how these molecules interact. So let's look at the Delta-8 uh, THC. And Delta-8 is an isomer of Delta-9 THC. And as I mentioned here, it's a changing of where that double bond is located. It only differs uh, from the placement of that atomic double bond. It's its only uh, structural difference, at least on a molecule basis. Generally, this chemical is produced in a lab and not extracted directly from the plant. It is actually synthesized from a CBD isolate. This creates a legal loophole, though, because the product is being sold as hemp-derived, even though it's actually chemically produced THC isomer. So it's important kind of distinction there, um, and this is why there's some of the confusion, why there's some companies advertising a lot of Delta-8 THC compared to Delta-9. So we're looking at the kind of extraction uh, difference here. So Delta-8 THC is a major cannabinoid that can be found in abundance and is easily extracted from cannabis. In comparison, when we look at extracting Delta-8 THC, it is more challenging simply because it's a minor cannabinoid. So when we're looking at the challenge parts of Delta-8, it's simply less concentrated. So therefore, it's a minor cannabinoid, so it's a little bit harder to extract. Uh, interesting article published, and what is the difference between Delta-8 THC and Delta-9 THC here, uh, that will be going through some of that information as well as what you've heard already. So when we're synthesizing Delta-8 from uh, CBD, Delta-8 can be synthesized entirely from CBD with the use of solvents. Uh, deriving Delta-8 from hemp ensures that the final product is under the 0.3% THC level to be federally legal. That's kind of a key point there, is that they're staying under the federally regulated 0.3% THC levels, because that's referring to Delta-9. So that's classifying it as hemp, because marijuana would be anything really above 0.3% uh, THC from a federal standpoint. That's why you see these large signs, Delta-8 THC, uh, because a lot of people are familiar with the, the letters THC, but this Delta-8 is classifying it currently to be uh, hemp, which is, has much more legal options to be sold. Now, if you want to know the steps to synthesize Delta-8 THC from a CBD isolate, they are basically listed right here uh, from a patent from uh, the website link here, and it kind of goes through a little bit of the process. Now, this is not a completely easy process. You have to dissolve the nonpolar solvent of choice. Uh, common solvents include uh, heptane, add a Lewis acid, uh, and add a bunch of other things. You want to maintain certain temperatures. You want to stir for a long period of time. Once the chemical reaction is complete, uh, under phase separation, you want to watch and neutralize the solution. You want to test for purity and contaminants using high-pressure uh, high liquid chromatography. And then the conversion still, despite all these very specific scientific steps, is still never quite 100%. So again, keep that in mind. This is not something necessarily easy to derive. Uh, as a result, there are different effects from Delta-8 THC versus Delta-9 THC. Delta-9 is considerably more potent effects than Delta-8. Paranoia, delusions, mental fog, impaired motor skills, and increased feelings of anxiety typically associated with Delta-9. 
Uh, in comparison, uh, Delta 8 is reported to provide a more muted experience, with most users feeling a great sense of calm and clarity. However, many have reported a definite high uh, to the experience, but not enough to impair the ability to form coherent thoughts or focus on activities. This also provides a little comparison there of Delta 9 uh, versus Delta 8 uh, listed effects. Again, a little bit more from anecdotal information, but kind of gives you that little bit uh, of a quick comparison between the two and then also some similarities. Now the onset time is different, so Delta 9 uh, has an onset that's more rapid and instantaneous. Delta 8 works slowly and gradually as it eases users to a more mellow state. So again, keep that in mind that Delta 8 can have a little bit more of that delayed kind of effect there. Hopefully not for your airline. Uh, similar end products are being produced from both because uh, both can be smoked as a flower, inhaled uh, through vaping, consumed as an edible form, also a wide variety of topicals, capsules, tinctures, edibles, and other products as well, uh, which you'll see the Delta 8 usually predominantly listed on the label or packaging. Now we get into the legality of things, and this you know always subject to change, but currently Delta 8 THC in any amount over 0.3% is not legal at the federal level. State level depends entirely on the local laws. Delta 8 is still technically legal in federal at the federal level, simply because uh, the kind of way that the 2018 Farm Bill is, is written, which legalizes hemp production, and there is nothing within the, uh, the bill that prevents uh, deriving Delta 8 from hemp and creating products with that particular compound, at least as it's stated and currently in the books right now. So this creates that hazy area, as they say. Uh, the psychoactive nature of Delta 8 has prompted a fair number of bans at the state level, though, so keep that in mind. There are currently, as this particular video and in the article cited, there are 15 states that restrict the sale and use of Delta 8 products, with another six states where legal action is currently pending. So while Delta 8 is more widespread at the moment than Delta 9, how long will it last is yet to be determined, simply because it's caught in that loophole of the current uh, 2018 Farm Bill. Now the availability of this, so when we look at the availability, Delta 8, since it's federally legal, can be shipped across state lines, unlike Delta 9. There's a lot more online retailers for Delta 8 products as a result because they can ship it and move it across state lines without a problem. However, just remember that Delta 8 products are not regulated by the FDA, so it's up to you to seek out uh, lab results tested from a third party to make sure what you're consuming and purchasing is actually what you think you're purchasing and is also safe to be using and consuming. So last little comparison, kind of that Delta uh, 9 versus Delta 8. Delta 9 might be considered the classic choice by some uh, with the, within the cannabis community. However, Delta 8 is quickly gaining popularity due to its milder effects and legal availability. Now, since there's, it's an isomer of Delta 9, uh, it's also likely to come under some form of regulation in the future, even though that may not currently be the case. Again, that simple flip of that double bond there doesn't look like it changes much. You can see here with the changing of the effects, but really how the current laws are written, kind of in that hazy loophole area. Uh, but hopefully this provides you a little bit more of an educational background uh, so you can understand better the difference between Delta 9 THC and Delta 8 THC levels.